we're just so thankful that he woke us up this morning, started us on our way, and gave us a activity of our limbs and the ability to be able to come out and do that which is right and pleasing in his sight. Amen. We want to continue to pray for those who are on our sick list. We have a number who are on our sick list. We want to continue to pray. Uh, of course, my wife, Kimberly, is uh, still recuperating from her surgery, and Sister King uh, still dealing with uh, some issues, and uh, she had a, a knee going on, and I think that's better, but when she deals with some other issues, we want to keep her in our prayers, and also Sister Humphreys had to go to the hospital, and so we want to continue to pray for her, and of course, uh, Brother Jefferson is still ill. And uh, we are praying for him. Good to see Sister Diane uh, in town in, Miss in Mississippi, uh, her own hometown, Jackson, Mississippi. Good to see her here today. I want to pray for, for Morgan. Morgan uh, had to have outpatient surgery today. Morgan Jones and Brother Jones is out with her. And uh, let's pray that everything goes well uh, with that surgery and the whole entire process. Uh, we just thankful to be here this morning, and we want to uh, thank God for the wonderful weather. It's uh, just a beautiful day outside, and uh, we're just uh, great, grateful to him uh, for this, this glorious and wonderful, wonderful day. And so we want to ask, does anyone have any other prayer requests at this time? Uh, Sister Sandra? Amen. Continue to pray for Diane who's making a recovery from her, her, her surgery. And uh, we're praying that the Lord will grant her a speedy recovery uh, from her sickness. And so we're praying for her. Sometimes you can overlook someone. And so we are praying that uh, everyone who's on sick list can will make a recovery. We also want to add that uh, uh, Randy Piquet, he they, they live in B.B. Arkansas, but they're down here. And in Jackson, quite often, friend of of uh, Brother John, Emily uh, uh, contracted uh, the COVID-19. But I understand that she's doing better, and uh, they just loved it when they came down to worship with us. And so we want to keep them on our prayer list. Uh, keep Emily on our prayer list. She'll continue to improve, and that God will bless her with a speedy recovery. If there are no other uh, requests, let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Almighty, gracious God, our Heavenly Father, the God who sits high and looks low and spoke our world into existence. Father, we come in before your holy throne. We come, Lord, to just say thank you for another day. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made in sending your son Christ to die for our sins. And not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Father, we thank you for this Bible study this morning. We pray as we come together that you will uh, be in our midst and our presence. And the things that we discuss, study this morning, Father, will bless our souls, our hearts, and strengthen our love and and our connection with you. It will strengthen our relationships with you and with each other. Father, we ask that you forgive us again for all of our sins. We know we all have sinned and come short of your glory. And uh, Father, we need mercy and we need grace. We need your love and kindness. We're praying for this, this world that we live in that's being controlled by sin, and by the devil and his angels. We ask, Lord, that you'll give us the strength, the testament of fortitude, to be able to resist the wiles of the devil. Thank you, Father. I want to ask prayer for those who are on our sick list. You know uh, what's going on with them and what's, uh, where they're hurting and where they're ailing at this time. Uh, uh, Father, my wife, Kimberly, and Sister Diane Ruffin, Sister Humphreys and Ernestine and Stanley, Lord, we're praying. We ask a special prayer 
on Morgan, who was having outpatient surgery, and for Sister King, the God, who's having issues with her esophagus, Lord, we pray that you will bless her and strengthen her and grant her a healing. Be with Emily, Emily early, Lord, that you touch her, grant her healing. She's dealing with the COVID-19 virus, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to to wrap your loving arms of protection around all those who are sick and shut in, Lord, and are able to be here and participate in these services. Sister Berry, Lord, we ask that you continue to grant her a speedy recovery. Father, we know that you are able to do all things, uh, do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think. We ask you, Lord, that you grant healing and that you help us to continue to grow and expand the borders of your kingdom here at this location. I want to ask a special prayer on Sister Sandra, who confessed boldly her sins. And we ask that you're cast in the sea of forgiveness and remember it no more. Bless us all and keep us all. Bless Brother Jefferson, who's still suffering with sickness. Father, grant him a, a full recovery. Watch over all our members. Help us, Lord, that we may continue to grow in love one for another and that we'll grow in our relationship with you. Thank you for this Bible study. Help us, Lord, that we might magnify you and glorify your holy name. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll sing a verse of one song. 988, I'll be listening. I'll sing one verse of that. Y'all help me to sing this. So stepping into Brother Jones' role. And uh, we'll sing a, a, ver a verse or two of this. Uh, 988 in your uh, faith and praise song books. Uh, I'll be listening. Here we have it. Let's sing. When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Yes, for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. And if my heart is right, I he calls me if my heart is right. I will hear if my heart is right when he calls me. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Yes, for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Name. Amen. Amen. I well, thank the class for your participation. And we're still studying from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, and we're moving right along uh, this morning. Hebrews chapter 2. Such an interesting book. It's one of my favorite books. It deals with not just uh, our salvation. But it deals with Old Testament issues, and, and you can find understanding from the Old Testament as well as new when you study the book of Hebrew. And so we're just grateful to have this opportunity and privilege to come together to study this wonderful book uh, called Hebrews. We do not, as we already discussed in the introduction, we do not know definitively who wrote the book. Uh, some say Paul and 
and Silas, uh, but uh, and so we just refer to it as the Hebrew writer because we do not know, scholars do not know exactly, some say Barnabas, but we always just say, some of folks say Paul, but I, I, we, since we don't know, and uh, we just say the Hebrew writer. And so we want to look at that. Uh, this we're in verse number 9 and verse number 10 of this book, and I'm gonna, we're going to move real quick, expeditiously uh, this morning. And uh, the title of our lesson is, But We See Jesus. But we see Jesus is the title of the lesson. And Brother King is going to read that, 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 uh, intro, that scripture and in introduction for us real quickly. And then we have a discussion. Hebrews 9, I mean verse 2. Uh, chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who were made a little lower than the angel for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God shall taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. And being many sons and, and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. In our last study, we saw that man due to sin fell from God's original state. That state will one day be restored and man will once again live as God originally intended man to live. In this study, we see how this change in con condition is accomplished. Fallen man has to be redeemed. Sinners have to be saved. How is man redeemed? How are sinners saved? We see Jesus. What man lost, Jesus restored. Sin brought a curse, but Jesus lifted that curse. The Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death. That is the penalty of sin. But thank God, Romans 6.23, don't stop for what we read. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus had paid the penalty for sin. The writer of Hebrews say, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God shall taste death for every man. Amen. Thank you, Brother King. Amen. He tastes death for every man. Why do you have to taste death? For every man. Anyone in the class wanna would like to respond to that? Why do he have to taste death for every man? Okay, okay. Amen, amen. Because well, because we sin, and when you understand what sin means, I think we talked about it in sermon. What does uh, death mean, rather? Uh, death means what? It means separation. Okay, that's right. Separation from God. That's exactly right. It means separation. When God told Adam, the day you eat of this tree, you should surely die. Now, he did not die a physical death at that moment, but he died a spiritual death. Is that right, Claire? And so what Jesus did, Jesus restored what man had messed up. Man had caused separation through his transgression. And so that is restored where? In Christ. In Christ is where? No place else. No place else. You can't find a relationship with God any place else but in Christ and through Christ. Amen? And so that's why it's so, in, so important. So we, we, uh, we have to understand that sin brought a curse, but Jesus lifted that curse that we were under. Amen. Isn't that something? He lifted it. He was lifted because the Bible says he is the captain of our salvation and that he was made perfect through suffering. He had to suffer. He suffered. He paid the price for our sins. He, he paid the penalty and he took the punishment. Amen. Those are my, those are my three P's I'm to put out there. He took the punishment, paid the price, and he took the, he took the penalty for our sins. 
Amen. And uh, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't die eternal. He went to yeah, to uh, to the um, um, into the uh, paradise or to the Hadean world. That's the word I was trying to think of. He went into the Hadean world, and the Bible says he has the keys of death and hell. Amen. And so we we have we have so everything that 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 God has for us is in Christ. Amen, church. We pray through Christ. Amen. We worship through Christ. We have a relationship with God is through Christ, not through any other man. I don't have to call anybody's name because when you only got one or something, you don't have to. You don't have a choice. Amen, church. God has only has one son, his only begotten son, that died for our sins. So we, let us look here uh, a little bit. We're going we're to stay a little further this morning. Uh, as we have Sister, Sister uh, Pat to read uh, the first. What we want to see is you see Jesus and we see his, carna his carnation, his incarnation, rather. Uh, you see, so, so Pat, you want to read that for us? We see his incarnation. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews 1 and 4, we saw that Jesus is better than the angels. Now, in Hebrews 2 and 9, we see him made a little lower than the angels. In our last study, we saw that man was created a little lower than the angels. Mm -hmm. By being made a little lower than the angels, he is that is better than the angels and is seen becoming like man. The writer is speaking of how Jesus became man. Mm -hmm. He is speaking of his incarnation, the act of God's becoming man. When he became man, the writer stated that Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. The word made and lower are the same words. The word means to lessen in rank or influence, decrease, make lower. The writer is speaking of how when he became man, he lowered himself to become man. Mm -hmm. It is significant that this is the first time in Hebrews that the writer uses the name Jesus. This is the name of his humanity. It is the name that was given to him at his birth by the angel Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Well. For he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1 and 21. Oh, look at that. That's something. He, 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 became, he became a man to do what? Save the world. Save the world. Save man from his sin. Amen. Right. That, we, that we became a man for. He came a little old angel. He had to come down and become one of us mm -hmm. to save us. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Amen. And so you're going to see here, Paul is going to say some things about it in Philippians. Read on for so, 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 in Philippians 2, 6, and 7, Paul described Jesus made a little lower than the angels. He says, Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Paul speaks of Jesus being in the form of God. The word form has nothing to do with shape or size. It refers to his attributes. The word speaks of the outward expression of an inward nature. Jesus, as we have seen, is the express image, his person, Hebrew 1 and 3. He is the visible expression on the invisible God. When we see Jesus, we see God. The word being means to exist. Jesus existed as God and was outward expression of God. Mm -hmm. Paul states that he thought it's not robbery to be equal with God. The word robbery comes from a verb meaning to snatch, to clutch. Jesus was equal with God. But as Paul explained, he did not clutch to the equality Warren Wisby, Wisby translated the statement. He did not consider his equality with God as something selfishly to be held onto. The word expresses 
an attitude that said, I cannot keep my privilege for myself. I must use them for others. Oh, the hell, I can't get you the power there. I think that's a, that's a very deep statement for Christians. Amen. Amen. You know, you, you have to realize, you, you know, you have to be in the form of God, but you don't allow your form to cause you to be too good to come down to help somebody else. Amen. 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 That's what Jesus did. He gave up something to help us. Amen. He gave up a lot, didn't he? You think about what he gave up to help us because we needed something that only he could give. Isn't that something? And so Paul says uh, his equality with God was not something selfish to be held on to. Man, he was unselfish. How many of us know Christians cannot be, unsel cannot be selfish? Uh, he can't be selfish. That's something we have to work on in class. And we're going to get rid of that selfishness in us. Amen. Amen. So, so he, uh, he, he gave up a lot. He was the express image of God. But he gave up a lot to help us. We're going to see it as Pat continue to read. Uh, continue to read that for me, Pat. Having this attitude? Having this attitude, he made himself of no reputation. The word made means to empty. The word was used of emptying a container, pouring something out until there was nothing left. Mm -hmm. Paul was declaring that Jesus, as God, emptied himself of his dignity and took in himself humanity. He laid aside his glory in heaven and robbed himself with flesh by becoming man. In Paul's word, he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Jesus, I mean, James used a similar metaphor as James 1 and 9, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. James 1 and 10, but the rich in that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. James 1.11, for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withers the grass and the flower thereof fallen, and the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away I, in his way. Oh, look at the rich man. So, so he says, he said, now let the brother low degree rejoice and that he exalted. So low people and people are humble, they, when, they, when you're in Christ, you've been, you've been lifted. But the very people that are rich, you need to humble yourself. Why? Because you know, just like the grass, for it, it's going to, as soon as the sun rises, it's going to scorch you. It doesn't take long. And so life is going to do us the same way. Time is passing. So what we're doing, we're getting ready for when life comes to an end. Amen? And it won't be long, will it, church? Oh, y'all just call y'all quiet. Diane reading. I'm trying to talk to her. I just read. We're going to discuss it. So, so, just, uh, so I want to ask this question to the class. He said, but we see Jesus. What do you see when you think about Jesus? What attribute do you see that you, that you need to you know, uh, incorporate into your own life? What do you see that Jesus had? How unselfish he was. Amen. That's a good one. Amen. What do you see, Brother King? How giving. How giving. Amen. Amen. He gave his own life, didn't he? Amen. What do you see, Sam? How, how loving he was. Amen. 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 Diane, what do you see? Okay. How much he loved us. Amen. How much he loved us. How about I see how forgiving he was. He forgave people even though they were hurting them. Mm -hmm. He forgave them. But that's nothing. They was on the cross every hand, and he said, What? Father, forgive them? For they know not what to do. They know not. 
So we see Jesus. So, so if we cooperate in our life, I, you know, I, I talked to, I was talking to the class, I talked to the class, I said, so the problem with us, with society, the society that we live in, is that we haven't learned, I, I think I highlighted this Sunday some that, 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 that we need to respect authority. Jesus had so much respect for his father. Paul says that he was equal with God, but still he had respect for God. Amen? He had respect for his father. He honored his father because God wanted him to do it. He came down and gave his life. And he said, no man take away my life. He said, I lay it down on myself. I had the power to lay it down, and I had the power to take it up again. And so he did it unselfishly. When we interact with folk, our, our you know, human brothers and sisters, we have to be uh, humble enough uh, to be able to uh, love them in spite of them. I think somebody was talking, I was having a conversation with somebody this morning, and I said, it's amazing that God gave us free choice. I'm telling you, I mean, starting to me. And uh, the person was discussing with me about how young men are walking around with their pants sagging. That's the culture. You can tell them to pull them up all you want to. They're not, they not about to pull them up because that's a style that they have. That's their style. And she said, well, she said, one sister would, would, be, would be saying, uh, y'all need to pull your pants in. I said, you, I said what, what they are, they're, they're operating in on is their choice. It's their freedom of choice. Amen? And, and you, can, you can get angry as you want to. They, they are going to continue. They're going to continue to have their pants down. I told her, I said, you know, sometimes I go to the barber shop, and this guy, he's, a, he's the owner of the barber shop, and he has his, he has his pants right there. He, he has a belt on, and he got a belt tied right there, but he's he going to pull his pants up. People have choice. Nothing you can do. I said, one of the things we did, we have to realize, is that we don't live in small communities like we used to. And everybody knew everybody. You know, everybody would know Brother King. Say, hey, Miss King. Hey, Miss King. They're like that. They had deep respect for you. And so we don't, and if you said something, people were, young, young folk would respect it. That's no longer the case. You know, we live, we live people don't even know each other. Amen. They don't, people don't come to church. And if they don't respect you, you can't tell them anything. And so they walk around. Some of them are loud their pants. Some of them way down here. I said sometimes, you know, oh, I'm serious. I know, know y'all seen it too. Amen. Oh, that's right. It'd be almost a fall, tripping fall, because they they pulling their pants. It's a sign of rebellion. It's a sign of rebellion. It's a style that they use. They like to use. People have choice. And they do what they, and so you might well develop a strong stomach. Uh, some, of these, some of these fasts that come through, you know, I, I, I get in and I say, boy, I'd be glad when that's gone. But this one won't go away. It's just hanging around. It's just, yeah, it's just hanging around. They still walk around their pants. I don't know what they get out of it. But uh, that's what they do. That's what they do. And so it's a choice, you know. But those of us who see Jesus, we see how respectful he was. He was reverent toward God. Amen. He was reverent toward leadership. He was even disrespectful to those men, those Pharisees. They were reverent during that time. What did church? Y'all might well say, man, I know it's right anyway. He was very reverent in the way he, the way he conducted himself. And so we need to uh, incorporate that into our life, be very respectful to other people. Amen? Amen. If we could get that in our, in our young folk, the world would turn around. The world will turn around. And one way I know to do it is we got we, we got to have to get them back in church. Get people back in church. Amen. Amen. I know that's right. People don't want to talk about it. It's hard. We just come to church ourselves and we just let the world just go. But we got to do all we can to get people back so that they can see Jesus. If they don't see Jesus, they're not going to change. They're not going to change. Okay. All right, let's see, I see anybody no comments on that. All right, so when, that's when he became, uh, Sandra, you're going to read why he became man. Okay, why he became a man. The writer of the Hebrews explained why Jesus became man. The purpose is, is found in the words for the suffering of death, and that he should taste death. 
Jesus became man with one great purpose in mind, and that was to give him life for man. He became man that he might die for man. Luke's account of the moment he became man says, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Luke 2 and 7. There seems to be some significant about the swaddling clothes, but they are not once again referred to in Luke 2 and 12. And this shall be a sign of, unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in the swaddling clothes lying in the manger. The word swaddling speaks of wrapping with straps. This was the method of wrapping a newborn baby. A new, uh, well, yeah, a newborn baby. It also speaks of the method of, of preparing a body for burial. We should call it death straw. When Mary looked at his tiny hands and feet, she saw hands and feet that would, would one day be nailed to the cross. When she held this little boy, she had a body that was destined to suffer in death. When she looked into his eyes, she looked into the eyes that would one day look out to the world in love and, and giving himself in death for others. Mary understood the purpose of his coming to the earth. He came as man to die for man. Uh, amen. He came as man to die for man. He came for one purpose, to be the perpetuation for our sin. Perpetuate, perpetuate. I think you find it in First John, First John chapter two. You'll see it in your Bible. First John chapter two. <clears throat> you see, it's in several places, but this is one of the places you can find the fact of why he came. You know, and and we we make light of it. That's what we finished just finished talking about is how the world make light of the Savior. That how shall we escape if we neglect so so great salvation? <clears throat> uh, which again, first of all, so we neg we uh, neglect the Savior. We take light of make light of him. We make light of sin. Folk don't see sin as something uh, that they need to uh, really be afraid of. And so they make light of sin. They make light of the Savior. And John says in 1 John 2 and verse number 1 and 2, it says, My little children, these things write out unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the perpetuation. Uh, for our sins, and not for our sin, ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So, he he is the picture. Word perpetuation means atonement. Uh, he's the atonement for our sins. The word atonement comes from a word that means when you break it down, at one meant, at agreement. God is at one. He, when we become a part of Christ's plan. God, we become in one with God. He restores you at one minute. We become in agreement with God. And so when you become in agreement with God, then you agree with his word. Amen, somebody. Amen. You agree with his will. You agree with his ways. You cannot be a part of the kingdom in disagreement with God. That's why uh, Amos says, how can two walk together Unless they, unless they be agreed. Give, give with me a uh, Second Corinthians chapter chapter six and uh, verse number thirteen. Watch what what Paul says about it. We are, we are at one. So he is the sacrifice. He he died so that he could be the perpetuation uh, for our sin. He's the atonement for your sin. He's the only one who can atone for your sin. He he's the only one who can pay the price for your sin. I mean, I just look at people and I, I feel sorry for them when they think that someone else can save them beside Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I think in Second Corinthians chapter uh, chapter six and, and verse number fourteen, I think that's where it is. Uh, if you uh, read somebody read what it say, I'm not over there. Read it out there for me. What does it say? Be not unequal. Uh huh. Unequally yo. You got it? Who read it? Unequally yoked. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Yeah. And what concord have hath Christ with Belial? Uh, Belial, that's right. 
or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Infidel, yeah. And, and what, what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Mm -hmm. For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Okay, oh, just pause just for a minute. Look at that. Look, look, look. That, that's, some, that's some powerful information. Mm -hmm. He says, it says now, don't be in together with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. For what fellowship is righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion have light with darkness? How can you hang with people who don't uh, believe what you believe? How can you hang with them? How can you fellowship with them? He said, that's, that's what Paul is asking. they be dealing with these idols, folk who are dealing with these idols, and, they, and they, they're sacrificing to idols. How, how can you do that when you know that they are sacrificing to something that's really not even a God? Doesn't even have, long, have any life in it. But you hanging out with them. They don't go together. Then he says, what, what concord has Christ with Belial? Belial was, 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 was is a, you know, I've done some, some, some study. Belial was, a, was, a, was a, a, one of the fallen angels. Yeah, an idol God. God don't have any, Christ don't have anything to do with that. And so if you're walking with Christ, you're not going to have any fellowship with that as well. You can't walk this way and that way at the same time. Amen. <laughs> kind of hard to do. Y'all yeah, 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 agree with me? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I know sometimes, you, you know, when, you, when you're close to God, you make people, you know, your, your stance kind of make people angry. But, but, but you can't walk with God and the devil at the same time. Amen. Amen. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. he, said, what, if, he said, what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. God dwells. Not, how many of us know God dwelling in you? If God dwelling in you, then I want to tell you, you're not going to be able to have comfortable fellowship with the devil. Amen. Amen. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. You can't serve two gods at the same time. Amen. Either you agree with God or you agree with with either. So you know, Amen. I mean, that's right. And so I, I look at folks. They still some folks. They still ain't learned how to forgive. They come to church and then they they can't forgive. You know, I love the Lord, but now, well, you don't love the Lord if you ain't learn how to forgive. You, you don't like, if it's hard to do, you need to go ahead on and try to work on it yeah, so that you can go ahead on and forgive and move on with your life because you got to walk with Christ. Amen. You see? And he says, he says uh, and I like he says, he says, uh, wherefore come out from among them. That's verse 17. Mm -hmm. you, right, you see it, Pat? Mm -hmm. And be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean things. And I will receive you. Mm -hmm. I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughter, said the Lord Almighty. And so you got to come out from among them. Mm -hmm. Come out. Leave, leave those idols behind. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be in agreement with me, you got to leave this old way and that old life behind. Amen. It ain't easy. It's not easy. Was it easy for Jesus to leave heaven and come to this earth? No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But was it necessary? Yes, it was. Are you thankful? Yes, I am. You may not be, but I'm thankful that he had enough love for me to come and die for me. Right. Amen. We'll be talking about things, a little bit about Thanksgiving this week, this Sunday. But I just I thought that would make sure we did. And so uh, that's what, that's what uh, atonement, uh, p the word propitiation means. It means the atonement at one minute with God. At one minute with God is what it means. And so we are we we were working we were working on that. Okay. I've spent too much time on that. All right, uh who is uh, Sister Diane he his substitution.
Okay, so 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 you know, that's a lot of information we covered. But we're talking about his substitution. He was he substituted for our death, our sin. He God put him in our place. Yeah, he put him in your in in our place. The, the let me let me make it clearer to you. The the beating that he took, it should have been your beating. Those 39 licks that they put on their back, they should have been on your back. They spit on him, they should have spit on you. The nails that were in his hand, and they said, they said crucifixion was the worst kind of death. And he tasted it for you. He experienced it, is what, what it means. He experienced that death for you. For, uh, for you and me, for all of us, he experienced. And what we're looking at here is we're looking for, un he was an unlimited su su substitution, and uh, the Calvinist the theology is something called tulip. And they talk about total depravity of man. Some men are so bad that, that, that they say they can't be saved. They totally depraved. <coughs> That's what they teach. They teach unconditional election by God, limited atonement by Christ, irresistible grace of the Holy Spirit, and the perseverance of the saints. Limited atonement means that, <coughs> that Christ's redeeming work was intended to say the elect only. Okay? And what they're saying is, what they're saying is that there are some people destined to be lost and there's some people destined to be saved. And God know who they are <coughs> before the foundation of the word. Excuse me. Excuse my coffee. Well, that's not, that's not really what it's teaching. They, I know they get their word elect from the Bible. But watch this. If you look in Ephesians chapter 1, you'll see. You'll see that word elect in, uh, in 1 Peter. But in Ephesians chapter 1, just for our Bible study this morning. I don't like to get too uh, bogged down in doctrine, but we, mm, uh, you see verse number three, verse number, actually you can read it all, but verse three and four, it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all see that? Who has blessed us with what? All spiritual blessings. In where? In the heavenly places. Where? Okay. Watch this. According as he is what? Chosen us. Where? In him. When? Before the foundation of the world. That what? That we should be holy without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us into, um, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. To himself, according to the good place of will. So where are we chosen at? In, who said that? In him. How do you get in him? That's exactly right. Who can be baptized? Everybody had a choice to be baptized. So the elect are those who have been chosen. How are you chosen? You are chosen by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's for everybody. Anybody can obey the gospel. That what Peter sees the same thing. And you look at it in First Peter chapter one, and uh, you see it in verse number three. Peter teaches the same thing. But you have to understand. Uh, you have to make a choice. God has already chosen you, and He's telling you the place the way you're chosen. He tells you you're chosen in Him. What's the place? In Christ. In the heavenly place in Christ. That's the place. Is it right, church? And so my question is, as a, lost, as a lost individual, how do I get in Christ? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I mean, I don't see how they can, how they can deny it. Anybody has the opportunity. Anybody can choose to be in Christ. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Who can believe in him? Whosoever. And Peter, Peter's teaching, he says, Peter, he is writing. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, he says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, uh, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according as he, according to his abundant mercy, had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So he, he has begotten us again. God, you've been born again. How? You see, uh -huh. see, 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 it's right there. According to his uh, abundant mercy, he has begotten us again. Uh -huh. According to mercy. How many of you know you're saved by mercy? It was God's mercy. Amen. You, you, you experience mercy when you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I can prove that. I don't have time to do it. It'll be a total Bible study. In Titus chapter 3, in verse number 5, it's about the washing of regeneration. That we receive his mercy. We receive, receive the mercies of God. Amen. And so when you, when Christ, when you obey God in the gospel, in obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have been chosen by God. God chooses those who choose him. I mean, the statement Sunday, the statement Sunday, I said, well, you know what thing? God was our friend before, he, before we even start following him. How many of you know God was your friend before you start following him? The Bible says, greater love had no man than a man lay down his life for his friend. Christ laid down his life, and he called you his friend. Isn't it something? He gave his life for you. Before you even became a follower, you were his friend. Amen. Amen. Before you became a fan, he was your friend. I'm glad that he was my friend. It's good to have some friends that you don't know about. Amen, church? How many of you know you got some friends you don't even know about? Amen. Amen. So you got to understand. So, so he, that, was, that was what substitution is. And so then they teach limited tongue. They believe that only certain people can be saved. That's what they believe. He said, he said that, uh, you, know, you can come to Christ if you choose, and you can leave if you choose. They believe that you can't be lost once you say, no, you can be lost. Amen. Amen. I, I know y'all looking at me kind of fun on that, but you can't be lost. You can lose what, you, what you've obtained uh, through Christ Jesus. So um, let's read the last portion here. Uh, Brother King. Uh, an unmerited substitution. Unmerited substitution. The writer speak of how he by the grace of God shall taste death for every man. Jesus became man. Jesus becoming man was an act of grace of God. Grace speak of the benefit of blessing of God that are bestowed upon us literally without cause of merit. Titus 2.11 say, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. When we see Jesus becoming flesh, we see God's grace. Man did not deserve such an act of love, nor has man merited it. It is all a story of grace. Donna Gray Burnhouse gave this acronym of grace. G, God, our righteousness, A, at, C, Christ, E, expense, mm -hmm. grace. So grace is God's righteousness at Christ's expense. God sent Christ to pay you the penalty and to extend his grace. What is mercy? Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. 
What is grace? Grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. God gave us what we don't deserve. A sin Christ. The Bible says we see Jesus. Jesus, when you see Jesus, I see God's grace. The Bible said the grace of God appeared uh, that bringing salvation had appeared unto all men. He didn't just appear uh, to some folk. He appeared to all men. And it's for all men. And that's why we have a great challenge in trying to share the gospel with whosoever is willing to hear it. Some folk will hear it just for a moment. Jesus tells you those type of Some folk will come and show up and they'll know what you're teaching is right and they'll convict in their heart and they'll get baptized. But they won't stay because they got something else they want to do. They got some, they think, some, some folk think they're missing too much fun. I'm just missing too much fun. I got, I got stuff I got to go out and do, bro. And I, I know what you're telling me is right. But I, I, I tell you, I'm just missing too much. I, I'll be back. And I, I have to call people and they be now. They say, bro, I'll be back. I'll be back. I know what you're saying is right. I'll be back. I said, you know what I'm talking about, bro, King? I'm going to say when they tell me that. I hope the Lord let you make it back. I hope he let you make it back. Because you are taking a tremendous risk and knowing that God gave his son, gave the life of his son. He's not the last chance that you have. He's the only chance we have to make it happen. He's the only chance we have. God doesn't have anything else to offer. That's it. And so when I see Jesus, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I see God's way and plan salvation. He possessed all the attributes of God. And I know some things that he asked us to do are very difficult to do. Uh, yeah, difficult to do. Amen, church. You have to give up a lot to be a Christian. Amen, church. I'm closing on this. We have to give up a lot to be a Christian. How many of you know you got to give up a lot to be faithful? You got to give up a lot to be faithful. You got to give up a lot to be faithful to the Lord. But I want to tell you, uh, when I think about what he has done for me, I want to say to you, it is worth what I had to give up. He gave a lot so that we can have this great privilege of being called his children. He says, come out from among them. Touch not the unclean thing. I'll be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. God is calling you out. You can't walk with the world and walk with the Lord at the same time. You got to let one go. I know it's difficult to do. And some folk hold, try to hold on to it. You know, and they come steady with me. I said, I'm going to tell you, you cannot do both of them. You can only do one. You got to make a choice. Amen. You got to make a choice. And what you going to do? When you see Jesus, you got to be more than grateful to make a sacrifice. Brother okay. King, you got comment? That's right. Sister Diane? I don't think they know that God don't want them to do that. They don't know it, do they? Or is it, or is it that they just in love with... See, the Bible says you can't, you can't love one. You have to love one and, hold, and hate the other. Amen? You can't hold to Christ and hold to the world at the same time. And like Diane said, they look warm. And when you look warm, he'll spew you out of his mouth. What he's indicating is, he's implying that, that you, you know, like, like you know, those of us who are coffee drinkers, you know, something lukewarm make you sick on your stomach, make you vomit. And God's saying, that type of uh, energy in me just make me spew you out of my mouth. I, he said, I wish you were hot or cold. I wish you were cold. At least I know where you stand. I don't think they know that, and some just put, some play play with it. But you, the church ain't gonna it ain't gonna really be able to progress until the people who are in Christ are dedicated to Christ. Amen. And so we gotta when we see Christ, see, so we see Christ, we see Jesus. He's our Savior who gave His life so that we can have eternal life. He died so that you can live. Literally, He died so you can live. That's what the Hebrew writer is trying to say. Uh, he, and he refers to him as the captain of the salvation, of our salvation. How many of you know the church is the old ship of Zion, and Jesus is the captain that's navigating us back toward heaven? 
He said, we're on our way. And I say that, every, I love to use the illustration that, that the church is, is moving through to eternity's time. Guess what? Some folk are getting on, but a lot of folks are getting off because they see uh, something they think they're missing. And so I want to tell you, stay on the ship. Once you get on, stay on the ship. Don't care about the folks on this. I'm not going to give that church. Some of them folks in the church ain't never even credit. I want to tell you something. You on this ship, some folks can be drinking, gambling, whatever they're doing. That don't make me get out because you're doing what you're doing. Hey, man, I go in my room and shut the door and let you go on and have your part. Because <laughs> God, God he, his thing is you stay on the ship. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. So that's, that's all I got. Anybody here come in? Okay, let us all be standing. Uh, are there any final... Let us go to our Father in prayer. Father God, our Heavenly Father, we ask your humble servants, stand before you at this time, Father, with bowed heads and humble heart. Father, giving thanks, honor, and praises to you for this day, for all that you have done. We thank you for the study of your word, Heavenly Father, the things that we discuss, Heavenly Father. We pray that each and every one that heard these words, Heavenly Father, will be careful to apply them to their everyday life that they might continue to be more mature, to be more of what you would have man to be, that you created man to be, Heavenly Father. We are thankful for each and every one that is present here. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for those who are look, listening to us uh, through Facebook, uh, YouTube, Heavenly Father, that you would that's continue to bless us all. Father, bless our teacher, Dr. Wig, and Heavenly Father. Bless his wife, Sus Kimberly, Heavenly Father. Bless his family. Bless this congregation that he oversees, Heavenly Father. That we all would just be mindful to, to support him. Support the mission that he is of, Heavenly Father. And that he is saving many souls, Heavenly Father. We thank you and pray for Heavenly Father, for those who act for prayers for themselves. Uh, so, uh, read Heavenly Father on behalf of Brother Jefferson. We just so thank for Heavenly Father to hear that he is back home, praying that he is doing better, Heavenly Father, praying that one day he will be able to, uh, to gain the strength, Heavenly Father, that he might be able to come back and worship with us. We pray on behalf of the request that Sister uh, Henson made, Heavenly Father, on, on, on behalf of her turnaround, Heavenly Father, you know exactly where she is and you know where she is trying to go, Heavenly Father. So we pray that you will bless her if it be your blessed will. We pray that you will give us travel and grace that we might be able to make it back to our very designation and find, th find things as they were when we left. Father, we pray that you will forgive us all of our unforgiven sin realizing that we have fallen short, Heavenly Father, and that you will cast them in the lake of forgiveness and remember them no more. This we pray and we give thanks for all that you have done. In the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen.